Do you know what the market's average rate of return has been? And how about the market's rate of return from the end of the financial crisis in March 2009 to today? Hey, I'm Doug Ray. I'm president and founder of Wealth Guardians and the Ray Financial Group. And I'm Bryce Payne, and you've entered The Vault, the Wealth Guardians video series on all things pertaining to retirement planning. In this episode, we're going to talk about market return expectations, fear and greed, and the role that they play in poor investment decision making. We're going to talk about return to the mean and what that means. And then lastly, we're going to talk about actual market return history. As always, you'll see those uh, like and subscribe buttons down below there. If you've already clicked on them, great. If not, feel free to do so so that you can catch future episodes of The Vault with Doug Garrett and myself at your leisure in the future. Okay, Doug, let's go ahead and get started on it here. Let's talk about expectations. We have a lot of clients that come through our door and everybody's got a little bit different ideas of what they should expect or what they feel is a reasonable expectation of a market. Yeah, Bryce, the reason I wanted to do this vault episode is because we've had conversation uh, with several folks, uh, both potential clients and, and clients in general for that matter, uh, wondering why they haven't made any money uh, in the market in a while. And, um, you know, we, we need to, like you said, they, they need to take their expectations and, and be realistic with them. You know, when I, we opened up this episode, I asked two questions. <clears throat> I said, do you know what the long-term average rate of return for the market is? Right. I think most people have that answer. They know. And if you said between 9 and 10 percent, you're spot on. That's about right. That's what dividends reinvested. The next question I asked was this. <clears throat> now, what I want you to do is take a look at the chart that's up here now. As I said, what is the average rate of return from the market bottom in March of 2009 up to the January 22 all-time high. Most people don't know the answer to that. It's 14.6%. That's 14 years of returns that are 50% higher than the long-term average. In a roundabout way, I think a lot of you have been spoiled. And I want to bring your expectations back to ground level. Bryce mentioned a return to the mean. So that's a terminology that says over time, we will return to the average growth rate, 9 to 10 percent. So in periods of time like, say, 1929 started the Great Depression, um, we dropped 80 some percent, I believe it was, on the Dow. It took 25 years to get back to even, and even longer to get back to the average rate of return, the return to the mean. The decade of the 70s basically started and ended at the same spot on the Dow Jones, but in between had two 30-some-odd percent bear markets. So I want to explain to you where we are today. Let's look at chart number two. Chart number two shows the top in January of 22. And by the way, uh, I drew these uh, charts off of a, a website called uh, stockcharts.com. It's run by John Murphy. Uh, there is a free side to it, which you can certainly get on and pull up some of these charts. Uh, there's a subscriber site, too, with more detail. And that's what, what I subscribe to. But let's look at this chart here in January of 22. You can see the movement is kind of a staircase down. It dropped until it bottomed in October of last year. That decline was 27.5%. Then we started to have what we call a bear market rally. We rallied from October of 22 to this past July that rally was 31.2 percent. Pretty strong bear market rally. Now you're saying, okay, if we went down 27 and a half and we rallied 31.2, well, we should be at all-time highs again. Hmm. No, <laughs> math doesn't work like that in the market, does it, Bryce? It's very common for people to mistake that, that math. 
actually where we are now relative to where the all-time high was again if you look on the chart you can see we're still down 9.55 percent from the high so that's why you haven't made any money uh, since uh, in two years. If you're in any kind of a stock market based investment or an a asset allocation mix, um, you know, you, you have seen some ups and downs. Let's look at the next chart. This chart's even more dramatic. What you see here is a chart of the long term bond market as represented by its exchange traded fund TLT. We've had the worst decline in bond prices in history. Most folks have their monies in a 401k IRA and it's allocated between stocks and bonds, whether you're in mutual funds or the actual stocks and bonds. You can see that the top in the bond market uh, was somewhere back in uh, March of 2020. If you recall, that's when interest rates were at all-time lows. In fact, some interest rates, short-term interest rates, were, were in the negative uh, range over in Europe and yeah. Asia, which was just crazy. And something happened in March of 2020, Doug. What was that? March of 2020, the Fed started increasing interest rates. Because of COVID, uh, among other things. And COVID came in, and we also st started to see... Um, you know, the, the, the Fed and the Biden administration pour money into the market. But the point I'm trying to get across here, bond prices tumbled between March of 20 until about November 50.6%. Now, let me say it another way. If you owned a bond in March of 20, and say you paid $1,000 for it, if you held on to it, by now, it'd be worth about $500. That's amazing. That is dramatic. So, again, my whole purpose with this Vault episode is to bring you back down to earth and let you understand what the re reality is. Because a lot of times, people don't really get that. You know, investors have two emotions. There we go. Fear and greed. And when the market's going up, like it has been since the March of 09 to January 22, that greed monster really takes over. And if you recall, from the summer of 07 to March of 09, the fear monster was alive and well within you. So if we're going to regress back to the mean, I want you to understand the next several years probably will not be... 9% or 10% and especially 14% per year. This is the perfect time to share what 30 plus years of experience have proven time and time again. When you're within a few years either side of retirement, managing account losses are much more impactful to your retirement lifestyle than rate of return. I like this baseball analogy. You can win a game without ever hitting a home run. Singles and doubles will still get you there, even if they aren't as exciting, as long as you avoid striking out. This philosophy is why we structure portfolios with some assets in fixed accounts that can't lose principal, along with a growth bucket account that is tactically managed with downside protection. The fixed account can be used to cover your fixed living expenses, so you've got the essentials covered even in slow markets. The growth bucket can be used for the fun extras that you can live without for a while if the markets aren't strong. Yes, volatile markets like the last couple of years mean less gains, but most importantly, the strategies we use mitigate losses to avoid striking out. All right, that's going to cover it for this episode of The Vault. Thank you for tuning in like you always do. Again, there's those like and subscribe buttons there. If you haven't already done so, feel free to click on those to catch fewer episodes of The Vault with Doug, Garrett, and myself. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. I want to remind you, financial plans do not create themselves. I'm Bryce Payne. And I'm Doug Ray. And this has been The Vault.